Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids and we're testing out bushcraft kit number two. So here's the area I'm gonna kind of set up camp. I can sit on those rocks, put a little fire there. I've got a rock to block some of the wind and also maybe push some of the heat back my way. You could see kind of a swampy area out that way. This is drier. So let's, uh, let's get to setting up camp. So as I've said before, one of the first things I like to do is organize my gear. And I originally had to plan to put some little nails and some hooks into like a dead tree to hang my gear. I don't know where those things went. So just a reminder, double check your bag before you go out. I thought I had them, I didn't, but I do have my little system here. So they're all, things are laid out on a uh, on the bandana from Wazoo and I'll show you what that looks like. So this way I've got all my gear in one spot. So there it is laid out. There's a little bit of gear on top of the bag my reflective sort of tarp blanket thing. My car keys are over there. And the only thing that's gonna be over there by the fire pit is my water and my in my um in my bottle and then also my nesting cup as well. So I use the Vaco Laplander, cut four sticks like that just to kind of frame out the area where I'm gonna have my fire. I do have some tin foil so I'm gonna put that down I'm not worried, everything around here is pretty damp. There's been a lot of rain and even some snow, but we'll keep everything contained in that area there so it's not spreading out you know, onto the leaves and other places. It's barely one o'clock here in New Hampshire and you can already see the sun is pretty low in the sky. Uh, we're almost to the 21st when the days will start getting longer again, but lots of shadows while we're out here bushcrafting today. So I brought a steak out to cook and eat, but I'm also going to make some pine needle tea. So we're going to use our little collection bag here and go out and do some foraging right now. Lots of pine in New Hampshire. So I'm just going to take some of the needles off of this guy. And I try to, when I pick, I pick from different branches. So I'm not just stripping one branch completely down and just want to get some, some needles, maybe kind of a, a palm full, a little bit more than that, maybe. Well, we want to be cautious as we're picking from the trees so we're not just completely devastating one part of the tree or one particular one particular tree. So I got a bunch from here, snag some from here, and then we'll dice this up and make some pine needle tea. Let's look at my pine needles. Not a ton, as you can see, but enough to make a nice pine needle tea. Very high in vitamin C and good for you. Here's that marsh area I was talking about. We do have open water here, but back there, I don't know if you can see, let me zoom in, but definitely got some ice forming on the water, even though it's probably around 50 today, so a nice day, but getting cold at night for sure. So while I'm out here by the water, I also found this, which is a plant that grows near the water stinks pretty terrible, but um, it might be able to be woven into some sort of cordage. So just for kicks, we're gonna give it a shot. When I'm out bushcrafting, sometimes what I like to do is test out different skills, you know? So I haven't used this before, I don't know what it is. Um, I've used, I was looking for milkweed before. Um, those stalks at the end of the year can be really good with the fibrous st uh, stalks, the fibers you pull off the stalks, but we're gonna give this a shot and try to do a little crafting while we're out here. So I started to gather some small pieces of wood there, but I wanna go out and cut some stuff down that's off um, off the ground, just to make sure we don't have tons of damp, damp wood. Even if that's a little bit wet, it'll still burn because it's so small, but for slightly thicker pieces, maybe, you know, as uh, like that around, as far as the um, circumference, I'm gonna go to some of these hemlocks over here and see if I can find some stuff that's up off the ground. Okay, I've got my Lord and Field uh, knife that's in my fire kit. I've got an Exotac fire steel. I've got some fire strip roll there. You can see I've kind of broken it up. And then I've got a little bit of the fire strip roll scattered in amongst these little branches. So I'm gonna light this, feed it under. This will burn for a while, so I'm not worried that this is gonna burn up quick and then I'm gonna be in a tough spot. So let's just get this uh, started here. And there's that. I wanna make sure I don't lose my knife as I put it away. So I'll feed this under here. Get that fire started. I'm going to 
put a little water in here. And I'll get my pine needle tea started. Now you can cut these up if you want, um, but I find just like tearing them is just as easy. It's less work. Just kind of, you wanna break them so that you can get some of the nutrients that are inside the needles out. You, you don't even really have to do this. And honestly, it, sometimes it does make it a little bit harder to drink, but I find that it gives a stronger flavor, which is nice. So that's just gonna heat up that water I brought so it doesn't need to boil. And now this is in here and we'll get some pine needle tea going once this calms down a little bit as far as the fire and we get a little bit of coals, we'll start cooking our steak. I can tell you one thing I've learned already, which is this is a great whistle and it's good to have a whistle, but if you make it so it can't even go around the side, and even with my, my hat off, you can see, gotta make the uh, lanyard a little bit bigger in order to put it around your neck. Good thing to know. Next thing we'll do is set up our hammock. And um, I'm not putting it right next to the fire because I don't want to melt this thing if I get any ashes on it or any um, sparks on it. Also, it's, it's getting cooler. It's moving into winter in New Hampshire. And so um, if you're making a winter bushcraft bag, probably a hammock is not going to be your top choice because you're not going to be just lounging there. You're going to be closer to the fire. So it's nice enough that I can set up the hammock and relax. So we're going to do that now. Laying down in my hammock, I look up there and I see that. So that's either an osprey nest, a great blue heron nest, maybe an eagle nest that gets too small, but pretty cool just to be lounging and to see that. I'm gonna snag a couple live branches to put across above the fire, but across the fire to put the stake on because obviously they're less likely to, uh, to burn up. So I'm gonna use the uh, Yukon Hawk Hawk to do so. Let's take a couple of these from the Tenlock tree. one and I could probably make two out of that so I'll only need one more here so there's that all right got my steak here I'm gonna put some of these across and they may burn a little bit and even honestly if the steak falls in I honestly don't really care because it's gonna get some grit on it anyhow but just put a couple of these green ones across lay this guy down right like that this is probably good and hot so I'm gonna grab my uh, I'm gonna grab my gloves to snag that as that starts to cook I'm gonna get out some of my spices here, which you can see. Put a little salt on that. So I'm gonna put it in my hand first and then sprinkle it on like so. I know you guys wanna see me do it, so I'll do it. So I'm gonna do it like that. I think I put most of that down my sleeve actually, but there's a little salt, a little garlic here. Garlic smells good. There's some garlic. Somebody very wise instructed me that you can separate these things, so that's cool. Now I can use my fork in conjunction with my gloves. Work on maneuvering this guy around a little bit. So while that steak is cooking, here's the the grasses that I got from the, uh, the swamp before or the marsh before. So here's what I'm gonna do just to show you. I'm gonna basically break it into two groups. So there's one group here and one group here. So that'll be basically a five ply or a five, uh, five thickness, five strand uh, string when I'm done. And basically what you wanna do is you wanna cluster these ones together and 
kind of twist them on themselves. And you want to do the same thing with the other ones. Now I can tell you as soon as I start, these start to kind of crumble, but at least we can get the concept. That I, this is not something I would use for cordage in a life or death situation, but you can see I'm gonna twist it away from me and then loop it under. Twist this next one away from me and loop it under. Next cluster, away from me and under. Away from me and under. Away from me and under. So I'm twisting it toward you and then pushing it under. Toward you and then pushing it under. Toward you and then pushing it under. And you can see in just a couple seconds there, let me go over here. You see I've already got a strand going. So I'm gonna go the other way now, use the longer end, which I should have done in the first place, but just to show you that you can really, you know, you can make a pretty strong uh, form of cordage out in the woods. You obviously have to have a good form of uh, material to work with. But once you, once you get going, like I've done this, I can remember years ago, I found a yucca plant and I was doing it with yucca strands while my son and my daughter were learning to ride bikes. And so we were out kind of on a dirt, dirt driveway at a house we were staying at and I just stood there and kind of made sure they were okay. And then just sort of mindlessly would work on this. And uh, I think I still have one of the strands that I made. So it lasted for a long, a long, long time. But again, away and then put it under away and put it under and look what I've made so far you can see that now this is where you test the strength I don't think this is gonna be strong at all here we go ready nope but you could see the uh simple enough process and do that and you know I made I made this much in you know a minute and a half two minutes you could make feet of cordage if you have the right materials and you got some time to just sit around and work on that all right so I just pulled this off the uh pulled this off the fire you can also see these three things they definitely got charred, but they didn't burn through. So that's why you want to use green for that. This I think looks pretty good. It's a T-bone and it's relatively thin. So I'm gonna see here, just try the end. It didn't look like, nah, that looks good. Maybe a little bit raw still, a little bit. It's a little bit beyond medium, but uh, that's gonna be delicious. Let's chow. So you probably noticed I set up my hammock, but I didn't set up a tarp. That's because I'm using this to sit on right now because I don't really need a tarp. It's a blue sky here, blue sky day, but I'm getting a lot of conduction when I sit on this cold ground and it's a little bit damp. So I'm gonna use this to sit up against this rock near the fire, eat steak, drink tea, and I've got brown sugar because I brought that in a little, that little kind of spice kit. So I'm gonna put some brown sugar into my pine needle tea as well. If you haven't checked out my first video in these bushcraft kit tests, you will remember I said something about wanting something to get me up off the ground. So a hammock's good for that in some ways because you're not on the ground. But um, if I want to, I can't really sit in a hammock comfortably and eat. So having this thing to sit on, you know, I'm, I'm this much off the ground. When it's compressed, it's like this, but fold it over a bunch of times, it's nice to be able to sit on that. Spice kit, if you have one of these, make sure you don't lose the little uh, corks when you uh, take them out to put salt, pepper, whatever it is on your food. I'm gonna put a little bit more on the steak here. Here's my steak. You can see it's a little bit, a little bit undercooked on one side and a little more so on the other, but looks good to me, so. T-bone, nice. All right, let me ask you a question. What do you think about napkins when you're bushcrafting? I feel like some people are gonna freak out, but the reason I say that is that I, like, I keep wiping my hands on the ground, which is fine. But a couple napkins that are biodegradable or, you know, you get done, they're paper product, just burn them in the fire, done. And you avoid having to wipe your mouth with your bandana and that gets nasty and dirty and whatever. Maybe you may hear that, but like, dude, you're just being a wuss. Just like buckle up and grow up. Oh, maybe, okay. But just throwing it out there. Let's hear your thoughts in the comments. So in case you've never done it before, that's what pine needle tea looks like. I got still have the needles in there. Um, if you chop them up really finely, you can get some in your mouth and you can swallow them. It's not a big deal. Um, but if you break them up, they're still kind of, they're big enough that they, they'll sink and cluster and they'll sink to the bottom. So you're getting the flavor and the nutrition, but not have to, you don't have to uh, basically be pulling pine needles out of your teeth the whole time. This is nice and hot still. Even this, uh, I can't hold this thing for too long or it starts to burn my hand. So nice to have a little pine needle tea to warm me up. So just sitting here reflecting a little bit, let me offer you a couple of thoughts. Um, first off, I wish you could hear the sound of the, the wind going through the, the pine trees up above me. It's just beautiful and mysterious. 
a uh, couple wins for this this kit uh steak and green needle or pine needle tea awesome uh having this spice kit with garlic and salt for the uh, steak and then sugar that i could put into my pine needle tea that's that's really i like that kit a lot um double checking on your kit to make sure that you know what's in there that's something worth doing so i put this kit together in the early fall it's late fall now and uh, i didn't think i had those nails and hooks so that's a learning curve right to be like okay make sure you know what's in your kit i will say as the weather gets colder it's a relatively relatively warm day for mid-december in new hampshire uh, as the weather gets colder just sitting around and lounging is going to get probably less and less comfortable unless you have a big fire or lots of heavy gear on so I've got a t-shirt on under this and then the, this this jacket and then I've got a, a vest over there, a down vest. But if it got much colder, I definitely want a full jacket. So if you're going out and it's gonna be chilly, make sure you dress appropriate, appropriately. If you're gonna be sitting around and hanging out, you know, you wanna make sure that you're, you're warm enough and safe when you're out there in the woods. Now, if I were to make an actual shelter using wood and then maybe this, this uh, tarp thing that I'm sitting on here, um, having an ax would be great. I did, it is very sharp. It's a really nice uh, hatchet, I guess. It's more of a hatchet than anything, or, or a hawk, I guess they call it. Um, but if I was gonna be chopping up wood, the, having the saw and a, an ax or a hatchet, definitely a win. Um, the Zancudo worked fine for a couple of little tasks I needed it to do. Um, that, that Yukon hawk is so sharp and the profile is so slim that I could slice off the, uh, the little small branches that I had to take off of these guys when I put them across for, so I could put them across the fire the little extra branches hanging off I just found like brrr, and they came right off so that that hawk is definitely I'm looking over there because the hawk's over there um yeah organizing your gear especially man this time of year but a lot of bushcraft stuff is brown it's green there's pine or all around here and brown oak leaves all around here so it's like oh yeah there's definitely you got to be a, you got to be wary of your gear so uh, I think for a later season kit, uh, the hammock is out. I don't think it's necessary. It's fine for this type of weather maybe, but later when it gets colder, maybe late December into maybe up to March, early April, it's probably gonna be just a waste of space to do that. So um, I'm gonna test out this, this tarp thing that I'm using as a seat right now. But um, I do have a climate inflatable one. I think I mentioned that in the past, but a climate inflatable seat that you can you can sit on to get you up off the ground. That's going to be in a future kit, and I think that's going to be a win. So there are some thoughts real quick. Steak was delicious. Um, that method I used to cook it, it still hasn't burned through those, those uh, three hemlock branches I put across it. So that method works. And um, if you're going to cook out here in the woods, you know, that steak was like less than an inch thick, I would say. Maybe an inch. So um, that's a that's a decent size because it'll cook relatively quickly. That gave me time to set up my hammock, take some video, and then come back and eat. So, all right, there are some thoughts. What do you think about this kit? What gear did you like? What do you not like? What would you swap out? I'll add here, it was nice to have the gloves, but um, I will say that those versus like a pair of thick leather gloves or even some of those work gloves that you can get like, you know, a, a pair of them for $1.99. Um, these are definitely more dexterous, but as soon as I picked up that hot... Um, cup that the pine needle tea was in I could hear it and I could feel it start to melt so yeah just be aware even if you have leather gloves these are goat skin um, just be aware that you know just because they're made of some sort of animal hide that doesn't mean that you're not gonna be able to burn yourself so just be careful with that more thoughts who knows anyhow with that said let's hear your thoughts and your feedback in the comment section let's get that conversation started now Hey guys, thanks as always for tuning into these videos. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids and click that little bell so you'll get notifications when our videos come out. Come out. Uh, we got more videos as always coming soon. The rest of this series, I may be doing something out in the desert as far as the next kit. We'll see if that comes together. Uh, but yeah, we're on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, Vero as well. Um, Facebook, did I say Facebook? We're on Facebook too. So thanks for watching the videos. More videos coming soon. Take care.